Hey, Wealthy Idiots, DC here. Welcome to another episode of Personal Finance in 10 Minutes or Less. Uh, today I'm going to talk about a really uh, hot topic for me, which is financial advisors. So uh, this is episode three of Personal Finance in 10 Minutes or Less. So let's get to it. So I won't lie, I almost named this episode Financial Salespeople, but I decided to use their official title. But you know, if we're looking at it for what it really is, financial advisors for the most part are salespeople. So they're more concerned with selling you a product than they are providing you a um, you know unbiased financial advice. So that's really the the short of it. So with that being said, they're sales pros. They are really good at telling you what they want, what you want to hear. They're really good at playing to your emotions, which, as you know, uh, in the personal finance space, is a really bad idea. And that's what we want to talk about today. So I'm not here to spread hate. Uh, I really just want to give you some factual reasons why, in my opinion, you should almost never use a financial advisor. And there's a lot of uh, there's really a lot of misconceptions about this. A lot of people will ask the question, well, you know, what if I inherit five million dollars? Should I use a financial advisor then? And it's kind of a confusing topic because you would think because you have more money, you obviously need expert advice when that's not really true. You may need a CPA and you may need an estate planning attorney, but you really don't need a financial advisor. Um, personal finance scales to an insane number when you think about it. And it's definitely not 5 million. It's more than that. So um, you really don't need one because you inherited some wealth or won a $250,000 scratch off, which again, disclaimer, wealthy idiots, we do not condone gambling in the lottery, but some of you win a $250,000 scratch off. So it is what it is. But just keep in mind, um, financial advisors, generally, as you make more money, don't become more viable. In fact, they will actually start to cost you more money. And we'll talk about that in a second. So I'm going to give you the four main reasons why you should not use a financial advisor. All right. So reason number one, you can buy very cheap, almost free index funds at almost, I mean, tons of brokers. So uh, the ones we often talk about here is E-Trade, Vanguard, Schwab, and Fidelity. Those are kind of the four we ping pong back and forth between. They're all very reputable. Uh, they have good reputations and they offer really low fee uh, ETFs and mutual funds. And that's kind of the key we look for. And then additionally, they don't offer things like account maintenance fees or administrative fees, which is just an added bonus. So that's kind of what we talk about when it comes to uh, you know getting the best bang for your buck. So you can buy cheap ETFs, almost free at all of these brokers. If you're not comfortable with this, they also offer target date funds. And target date funds give you the ability to invest um, with a fund that is basically consistent with your projected retirement year, and it uses a glide path to pair risk as you get closer to retirement. So if you decide uh, you're going to retire in 2045 and you pick a 2045 retirement fund, you know, as you get closer to 2045, your fund will start to naturally become more conservative and preserve some of that capital for retirement. So this is a really easy way to invest. It takes almost all thinking out of it. Uh, the only negatives are target date funds have a little bit higher fee than index funds typically. Um, and also they're not the most tax friendly vehicles. So if you're doing it in a brokerage account, there is some question marks. But um, again, target date fund will almost always beat advisors that are you know, cherry picking specific funds for you that give them high commissions and, you know, that they get endorsed by their company and so on and so forth. So that's reason number one. Reason number two, the fees. All right. So we kind of touched it in reason number one, but reason number two is really the fees. Um, advisors normally charge something called an assets under management fee or AUM. So this is a fee charged on your total value of assets under management. So if you have them managing a million dollars, they will charge a fee on that million dollars. If the account grows to 1.5 million, they will charge a fee on 1.5 million. All right. And this fee normally runs between one and 2% of the assets they manage. So yes, you heard that right. If you are investing a million dollars with a financial advisor and they have a 1% AUM fee, they are charging you $10,000 a year to do almost nothing. $10,000. All right. So that's a lot of money. Um, and keep in mind, this isn't the only fee. So there's also expense ratios or ERs, as we call them, which can be anywhere from 0 0.04, which you see at like Vanguard, Fidelity, Schwab, all the way to 1% to 1.5%. In fact, there's even some funds that have a front load sales commission on top of them. 
So, I mean, there's a lot of bad deals and a lot of these advisors love putting people in these products. So keep in mind, um, some of these products you see offer very good commissions to the salespeople and they're going to give you those products because they gain better commissions off of them. So um, it's just a way better prospect for them from a sales perspective. If they try to pitch you VTI, uh, Vanguard's Total Stock Market Index Fund, they're going to be paid almost nothing for that fund. They'll get their AUM fee, but they won't get that extra expense ratio on top of it. So again, reason number two, the fees, ouch. Number three, bad advice, all right? So this one's kind of counterintuitive because you would think if you're hiring a financial advisor, you're paying them to give you good advice, right? Well, you are, but you're not necessarily getting that. They have a lot of ways that they can call themselves a fiduciary, but still give you bad advice by selling you funds that um, really are highly recommended by their company because they have insane sales commissions towards the sales rep. They often underperform the stock market by a long shot. If you want to read evidence of this, take a look at uh, the book by uh, the founder of Vanguard, John Bogle. He talks about the uh, basically the gap between actively managed funds and index funds and how actively managed funds lose like 90% of the time. So again, there's a lot of evidence that advisors don't necessarily buy you anything in terms of gains. In fact, they usually just starve you from gains because they have you in inadequate funds. And then you add in the fact that you have um, even more fees on top of the inadequate earnings. So again, uh, that means they're getting paid more. You're earning less. It, it's an all, all around loss. So just don't do it. Bad idea. Number four. All right. Number four is that they are not your friend. And this is something we hear often, um, you know, it's my finance guy, like my finance gal, like she's got my back or he's got my back. Like he calls me and checks on me. And last weekend he took me out on his boat. Yet yeah, no one gives a crap, to be honest. All right. So the guy has a boat and it's because you've been paying him 10 or $20,000 a year in commissions. So he had so much commissions from all his clients that he could buy a 33 foot yellow fin and you somehow feel good about getting one trip a year on the yellow fin to the local, you know, beach restaurant whatever. Horrible idea. Um, advisors are not your friend. They're not trying to bring you out on the boat because they think you're going to be like the best man at your wedding or your uh, bridesmaid or whatever. That's not why they're doing it. They're doing it because they want you to keep giving them your money. So that is the only reason. Um, remember, they're bringing you out on the boat because you help pay for it. Technically, it could be about a fifth your boat, but uh, you know that's not how this works. So um, again, I'm going to recap real quick top four reasons financial advisors are bad. Number one, you can buy very affordable, good funds on your own. Two, the fees are outrageous. Three, bad advice. All right. You're going to catch some bad advice. And four, they are not your friend, but they will act like it. All right. So those are the top four reasons financial advisors may not be for you. Uh, I want to throw one caveat out there because this is a big one. And AJ and I talk about this all the time. There are a uh, there is a certain flavor of advisor called a fee only advisor. These advisors actually charge you a set fee for services. So as an example, I would go find a fee only advisor that say I'm three months out from retirement and I just want a second set of eyes. I say, hey, man, I'm looking at this. This is all my income. This is my debt. This is what my drawdown plan is. And they would review everything I gave them for a fee and then give me a recommendation saying like, hey, I think you're doing good or you can improve in this area or what about holding more bonds? Like they would give specific recommendations on how my plan could improve. But there would be no sales pitch. It would be a basically it would be unbiased feedback on how you can better your situation. All right. So again, fee only financial advisors can definitely bring some value. So keep that in mind. Um, and again, this isn't to take anything away from like tax attorneys or estate attorneys or CPAs. All of those offer value in very specific and broad circumstances as well. So definitely keep that in mind. All right. But uh, I appreciate you guys coming to listen again. This is DC uh, bringing you a third episode of personal finance in 10 minutes or less. I uh, hope you guys gain some value out of this.